Alright, so here's the third wooden gun I'm going to show you. It's a pretty big boy, it's not as big as the other big boy, but still pretty big. Uh, it's probably one of the most iconic guns of World War II. Actually, probably one of the most iconic machine guns, actually. Uh, the Americans called it Hitler's buzzsaw, but I think we know it as the MG42. I intended this to be a Christmas present for my dad, but I had to push it to his birthday because I murdered my back working out and I couldn't work like six weeks, but nevertheless I finished it and here it is. Like I said at the beginning of the video, it's pretty big, but not as big as the, uh, the previous gun. It's like four feet and weighs like, I don't know, six kilograms. It only has two moving parts because I was under a time limit and my dad isn't going to be like playing around this thing like a toy, no, he's going to stand up on a table or on his desk. The parts that do move are the bipods and the hatch. The bipods have two pivot points, one here and one here. And you turn this thing here to close it and keep it in place. So here's a bit of a close-up of the bipods. This can turn because there's a bolt going through here and these can turn because there's a bolt going through here and I really should have made this part here out of plywood because plywood is obviously stronger and this is splitting like crazy and I can tell it's gonna break soon the hatch was really easy it's just a hinge there and that's how it can do this for the magazine I did the same method for the uh, MG08 where I just cut out two sides and cut out flipwood jillion layers for the top and bottom and then lay them on the sides and make them curve. The stock was probably the hardest one I've ever had to make because first of all it's made of oak and I ran out of coping saw blades so I had to do the rest with a hacksaw and just my wood saw. The barrel was also pretty hard because I had to drill out all the holes with a hole saw and then cut away the waste with a coping saw every single time for every hole. The grips were also pretty hard to do because I had to make them lines by hand with a file, every single one. This little handle here on the magazine was originally a black pipe that I had to flatten out and I bent it with my hammer and vice and I say it turned out pretty good. And these little brackets here were also part of the same pipe that I had to flatten out and bend with a hammer. That's it, I hope you didn't enjoy the video. Smash that dislike button, drop like a frog out your window, learn Taekwondo and use conditioner before shampoo. And if you're bored, do it anyway. And don't subscribe for less content like this. See ya.